All right, guys, <clears throat> welcome to part two of our uh, series on our markdown HTML documents. Um, at the end of the last series, you know, I waxed poetic about how oh, this document looks so nice, but we're gonna keep working on it, make it look nicer and nicer. Um, we can make really cool reports, uh, especially if you're able to make much nicer looking graphs. We just used very basic graphs in our last one, um, but we're gonna keep working on it, so let's go. Okay, so this is where we left off. Uh, we had, we integrated our uh, slope of our line into our narration for the document, um, but we're gonna create another section. So here, we're actually gonna use the hashtag. Before I said that using the hashtag doesn't hash out uh, annotation to your code because it's a markdown file, um, it does something different in markdown. Um, so we're gonna call this section headers. And so, uh, we can also put sections and subsections in our, our markdown file, similar to numbers or bullet points uh, in a Word document. Uh, this is done with the hashtag uh, that we previously used to to denote text in, in our script. Okay, so the way that this works is um, if we do one hashtag, we get a first level header. If we do two hashtags, we get a second level header. And if we do three, we get a third level header. Um, look at this. What is going on here? Second, third, okay. Level header. Um, so it's important here. Put You have to have a space after your hashtag. If you don't have a space there, then it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, Markdown doesn't understand what you're saying at that point. Um, one of the big keys to doing uh, coding is these nuances, right? And making sure that you obey the laws of our. Um, so uh, we'll put a Note here, make sure that you put um, a space after the hashtag, otherwise it will not work. Okay, um, so let's quick run this. So uh, knit on save, right? So if I save this, I'm just gonna save it as the same thing. Um, you can see down here, we have section headers. So this is the biggest one where we have the single hashtag. Um, a first level header, right? So those are the same size. And we get second level, the third level, right? So it's kind of like uh, if we were to change your text to denote bigger and smaller sections, right? So I'm gonna close out of, excuse me, close out of that. Um, clear out this terminal, just cause it's staring at me. Um, so uh, we can also add bullet points. Uh, I say bullet point type marks in our, our markdown file. Okay, so the way this works is we use the dash. So we remember to have a space, so we say one item, then we have one item, we have one item, and then markdown, unlike R, is much more um, strict. I guess, in terms of indentations. So we do the tab uh, to tab in one, and then we say one more item. And then as you see, you hit enter, it kind of saves your spot. Uh, and then we do one more item. Okay. Um, so let's save again, just so it knits, and look at what we got here. Here we go, so we have uh, these kind of bullet points, so you can put bullet points just by putting those little dashes in your uh, markdown file, and then as you see the indentation, it kind of changes the format. Um, so let's try, um, let's do one more indentation. One last item, let's see what this looks like. Yep, and see now we're on the squares here. Uh, so you can indent ad nauseum depending on how far you wanna go. Um, okay, 
So let's make a note to ourselves here though. Uh, so it's important to note here that in our markdown indentation matters, unlike our regular R scripts. So um, on top of that, we can actually do ordered lists as well. So this is kind of like important. Um, so let's do kind of like those were bullet points. Let's do numbered lists, right? So if numbering matters as opposed to just having at this point, right? One item, one item, or one item. They don't have an order of importance. Um, so let's do first item instead of one item. Oh, first item. Second item. Third item. And then we can do uh, uh, tap in, do our little line, and then we do uh, sub item one, sub item two, sub item three. Okay. And let's knit. So here we go. Oh, uh, what's going on here? I guess that's not super important. Let's get, let's keep, keep on keeping on. All right, so we're gonna make a new section. In this section, we're gonna do two uh, hashtags, and then we're gonna do block quotes. Um, so we can put really nice quotes into the markdown document. Um, we do this by using the <coughs> excuse me, uh, greater than symbol. Okay, so I'm gonna do this greater than and see it changes to yellow uh, on mine, depending on what uh, aesthetic package you're style you chose, it'll be a different color, but it'll be different than your regular text, right? So I'm going to use a quote that I like. Jeans are like the story and DNA is the language that the story is written in. Wow, that's not how you spell it. Written in. Okay. And then I'm going to put another two more greater than symbols and I'm gonna do three dash lines and that's uh, a quotation from Sam Keen. And let's submit this and see what this looks like. Look at that, really nice. So we get this little line here that kind of inlays the quotation. So genes are like, uh, genes are like the story and DNA is the language that the story is written in Sam Keen. Um, so if you wanna put a quote into your Markdown file, beautiful. You can quote me if you'd like. Nobody will know who I am. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's keep going. Uh, hyperlinks. Um, so since this is an HTML document and it'll be like on a web page or on the web, um, you can have hyperlinks that are clickable, right? And it'll take you to other web pages or other Markdown documents if you got them, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, let's our narration hyperlinks can also be incorporated uh, into these files this is especially useful in html files since they are in a web browser and will redirect the reader to the material that you are interested in showing up. Um, here we will use the link to our Markdown's homepage for this example. So uh, the way that this works is you use a square bracket and write what you want the words to say that you click on. And then 
after the square bracket, you do a parentheses. You see it changes the color of that to say that, okay, this is gonna be a hyperlink. And you insert the um, hyperlink, the actual where you want the browser to take you. So HTTP, HTTPS backslash backslash our markdown that dash dash our studio dash dot God, geez, Louise. Ugh. All right, got some medicine head going on here, so bear with me, please. All right, let's save and knit and see what happens. Okay, so you see down at the bottom here, we talk about our hyperlinks and we have this, it says our markdown. We could build it into the actual text, um, but let's put it afterwards and you click on it, boom, takes you to our markdown homepage. So if you have a publication that you're uh, citing, or a data set that's online or something like that that you want the reader to be able to look at that or like I said another uh, markdown document or uh, you know link to the um, package documentation of a uh, bioinformatics package you're using or something awesome to be able to put it in there like that okay so let's continue on here um, let's do one more thing here before we and this section we're going to do formulas so um, this is kind of like the quotes and unless you get really into like theoretical stuff computational stuff um, you might not use this a whole lot but it's nice to know um, so we can also put uh, nice formatted formulas into markdown oh my gosh. using two dollar sign so we're going to do a good genetics one, right? Uh, the Hardy-Weinberg uh, formula, so kind of a population genetics. So $2 science, um, and then we're going to say P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one and then we close it off with dollar signs again so you see that we you know got this change in color to indicate that it's not going to um, denote this as just narration um, and as you can see it automatically it puts it in there right away so um, we got this nice uh, p squared plus 2 pq plus q equals one um, and so we can also so this is a really generic formula and it looks it looks okay it, it doesn't look you know, super crazy um, you can get really complex though um, so bear with me here this is gonna be uh, uh, some typing all right so we're gonna say backslash theta equals backslash uh, begin matrix which means um, or P matrix which means it's just a formatting. So we're gonna have things like if you've taken uh, calculus or whatever, you have you know matrices where you have four uh, two by two uh, numbers, et cetera. Um, we're gonna close off this curly bracket and then we're gonna say alpha. And, and sine, ampersand, beta. And then we're gonna go to the next line. We're gonna say gamma and sine delta. And then we're gonna say end the matrix. Dollar 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 dollar. Okay. So here's something more complex. Let's donate it and take a look at it real quick. So you can see you can get like real complex formulas uh, where you have all the Greek symbols. Um, in this case, you know we have theta equals alpha, beta, uh, and uh, uh, gamma and delta. Um, so the matrix we said a P matrix where we had the top two are alpha and beta, and then we went down to uh, the next line here, and then we did uh, gamma and delta, and then we said end the matrix. Um, so <clears throat> we're gonna let's. Um, let me pull up my browser here. Um, how about I spell sheet right? Okay, 
So all this is done with uh, what's called latex. And so uh, latex is kind of like R, it's like another language um, that integrates with R, is kind of built with R, um, or R is built to integrate a lot of things of, of latex. Um, and so um, this isn't a super great cheat sheet. Oh yeah, there is. Um, so you see there's a whole bunch of different math code symbols and things like that. So if you, we're not gonna get too heavily into it because we're not really gonna be designing formulas or anything, but I want to expose you in case um, that you were interested. Um, in this, in the Praxis course, uh, there'll be a link to one of the cheat sheets so you can check it out. Otherwise, just Google uh, it's uh, like that. Where'd my, uh oh, where'd my thing go? Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, at, that's how you spell it. So if you are interested in looking at one of those cheat sheets, um, if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, um, that's where you find all the information. Like I said, that could be an entire course or whatever. We're not gonna get into it because we're not gonna do too much theoretical or, or math or physics or anything like that where we have to put formulas out. Um, so that ends section two of HTML documents. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.